Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to sit a little bit and share with you. I have many of my table runners or altar clubs here and share a little bit about how I listen to the muse. This is one of the many questions I get asked as someone who is a weaver, also minister for multiple decades, also yoga teacher for multiple decades and spiritual mentors. So listening to the voice of that muse, is something people say, you know, how, how are you doing it? I am not, whenever I weave anything, including piece I'm wearing, and by the way, I know I'm super colorful today. I had a little totally benign situation, a little surgery on the top of my head. So that's why I'm wearing that. And so I'm working through, I wanna show you a couple of these beautiful table runners. This one is called Peaceful Earth and one thing I love about it, as many of you know, I am weaving with multiple different upcycled and repurposed materials. So in here you'll see um, this white here is actually a t-shirt. I am also somebody who weaves looking for, longing for, and excited to have a lot of real texture. I am a textural person. I am a colorful person. To me, there are things that make the cloth feel alive and things that make the cloth feel very different from machine made, which is important to me. I don't want to copy machine making. Misao Zhou, the founder of Saori Weaving, talks a lot about that and is a deep inspiration for me in terms of thinking about, um, I want my cloth to look alive. Do you know there's that practice of like living edge, creating living edge, um, coffee tables, other pieces of wood where, where the tree is still living, right? So for me, this is living cloth, living edge cloth. So here is Peaceful Earth. Um, many of the yarns in there were uh, given, donated to me, and I went on to make these altar cloths. Really, they could be table runners, but part of their design was to be put down onto a table and have some of your sacred things, your sacred books, your candle, to really mark a space as different than every other space, like a table that just gathers dust and has glasses on it or whatever. And I'm just talking about my house because we have a lot of kids, so we have a lot of tables that just get, as soon as there's a clean surface, they get filled. So here is this little one in fire, in the theme of fire and you can see it there, and multiple different yarns and ribbons were woven into that one. So thinking about the muse, you know, this is a, a, a word that artists use a lot, that they're listening to the muse, and as also many of you know, I am the daughter of a novelist who's written and written and written and written and written, I think 36 books now, and so we think about like, what allows us, what gives us all those ideas? When I think about all the plot lines that my mother has written, and even in the process where she's working on a plot line, where do those ideas come from? Or if I'm working on a piece of weaving, here is another one of those altar cloth table runners in the theme of earth. This one much more green. Um, here's some beautiful goat rope, that blue. Of course I wash my rope. This is the rope that goes around their hay. Everything is washed and these cloths themselves can be washed. Um, hand washed or washed in machine. There's also some more beautiful rope there that gives it a wonderful edge. And here's a wonderful one in the ocean, a little bit longer, right? So, the, and this has, I think, balloon in it. I do love to use balloon and foil balloons. It's a wonderful thing to do with them instead of putting them in the garbage. We have a lot of birthdays at my house with six kiddos. So in weaving, listening, what does it mean to listen to the muse, to, to get an idea? Well, for me, I often get ideas when I'm dreaming or when I'm just waking up. And how I think of it as being more connected to the creator, um, the great I am, higher power. To me, um, there is no muse like a, of like a little fairy muse or something like that. I'm trying to pull all of these up at the same time so you can see them while I'm talking about it. Um, and I've, I've spoken about this before, is the practice of listening and listening for a different kind of voice than you hear most of the time. So a voice might, you know, a, a regular voice would be like, okay, people really seem to like my ocean pieces, my blues and my greens, I'm gonna make another one. That's just sort of the regular ordinary voice. I would not call that the voice of the muse, although I suppose it could be. 
But to me, the voice of the muse is more like a download. It's something that sort of lands in one's thought in a complete form. So I might have a thought to weave in a particular way or with particular colors or a particular kind of thing, and it'll come in as, as a full thought, and then I'll just go do it. And the other way I hear is that I'll just be weaving. I usually have my materials on the floor or in a basket beside me. You now, what's the next color? So when I'm actually sitting at the loom and weaving, I am attending to a different kind of listening. I'm attending to a deeper level of listening. So if I'm thinking, oh, blue might look good next, that's not usually the voice that I'm listening to. And to listen to that divine inner voice, to listen to that sacred or holy voice, to listen to that, some people call it the voice of the muse inside of us, that we as creators are tapping into the voice of the great creator, creator of everything, it requires practice. And it requires being willing to make mistakes because you could be wrong, could maybe it wasn't that voice and, and you end up making something that doesn't end up to be that lovely. And it, and it requires trust because then sometimes you'll make things, you'll be like, well, gosh, I don't know if anybody is gonna like this. I took a piece off, I was commissioned to do a piece and I wasn't sure that the person who commissioned it would love it at the end because there was an element I completely left out because I just felt that the piece was done. So I took it off the loom. And ultimately I had to say, you know, this piece is what it wants to be. And maybe she'll like it and maybe she won't, but the piece has its integrity. It is complete and what it wants to be. And so that required a little bit of trust on my part. You might be happy to know that she loved the piece. So that all worked out. So some thoughts about the muse, and I'm sure there'll be more thoughts to come. Don't forget, give me that thumbs up, subscribe, and please come and visit my weaving shop. There's so many beautiful things in there, and I love to weave, and I love to send my weaving out to be a blessing, an inspiration, a source of beauty 